Hello there. Welcome back to my channel, Lini Ale. If you haven't been here before, thanks for dropping by. So today we will be planning for June. It's actually my birthday month, which is exciting. Before we journal, I want to take you around the city again. I've been wanting to try this Taiwanese tea room, um, so I'm excited to take you with me. I'll also wander around the city a little more afterwards to find a plant to gift my roomie. And also I have something to show you guys at the tea room. So I hope you enjoy our adventure together. Let's go. So we're heading to the tea company. It's a tea room known for its authentic Taiwanese tea and snacks. I heard about it from a friend and I've been wanting to try it since, but then the pandemic hit. So here's my chance. Their indoor dining isn't open yet. So we grabbed our snacks and tea to go. But we had such a pleasant conversation with the owner and she loved my little doodles. I'm excited to show you all the goodies I got. I drew this illustration before I left home earlier because I was hoping their indoor dining would be open, but I'll just have to come back for that experience. This is a mung bean bun and it's really good. And this is a pineapple lizard cookie and this is a shortbread cookie. And I got the Oriental Beauty Tea. So, yeah. so let me now know. we're walking. Don't be alarmed, there's a lot of yelling and singing on the streets of New York. We just got distracted by the stationery store, so we're just gonna step in really quickly just to take a look around. Alright, now back to what we were planning to do. We're going to stop by a plant shop to get my roommate a plant. And so we spotted this store, Rose Cranes, and we're going in. It's a plant store, a florist shop, and a cafe. They have a lot of amazing plants. This is pretty exciting. Our main objective here is to obtain a love fern, which is a fern plant from the movie How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. It's an inside joke plant but we're hoping our roommate gets it. Yay, we found our love fern. So now we're gonna go home. So I just got back to my room. Um, it just started raining outside. So we just decided to come home and let's start journaling. So if you've been to my channel, then you know the drill. Basically, I use a word as my theme for each month and so the word for this month is going to be genuine and also along with my weekly spreads i'll be preparing weekly challenges so if you end up joining please hashtag so that i can see them i love seeing everyone's journal entries and so yeah let's get started the word i selected for this month is a little abstract so the weekly challenges may not fully relate, but they'll still be fun. I selected the word genuine, which I feel is a synonym for authentic, real, vulnerable, or transparent because I've been struggling with expressing myself authentically. So I wanted to explore this word this month. Let's begin with making a color palette. So someone requested this in the comment section of my last video and let me know if this is helpful. I'm using gouache and I'm just mixing colors that I'll be using on this setup. For the aesthetic of this theme, I will be trying a cottage core inspiration. So like my other videos, I'll be chatting and giving a few pointers here and there while we journal. I feel like authenticity and vulnerability has been pretty popular topics in my readings and podcasts lately. I find it so difficult to express myself in a genuine way because there are so many internalized expectations from external influences like our society, culture, the media, our religion. We also have our own unique history and upbringing. We have our inner battles and even stereotypes that can shape us and alter how we carry ourselves. There are just so many factors that can complicate us. I know, we just got started. 
on mixing a color palette and I'm already talking about some really deep stuff. But welcome to my channel, which I still don't fully know what I'm doing, but I journal, eat, and talk, and I'm just winging it as I go. The colors I've mixed are bright nature tones. I'm trying to keep this palette saturated and warm. All right, let's start on my monthly cover page. We will be illustrating a picnic scene. I found a photo on Pinterest of a cottagecore inspired picnic. So I'm going to illustrate that in my style. I find it really fun to find photos or real life subjects to render in my style. And actually guys, I'm still developing my style. I feel like a lot of you tell me that I have one, but I'm still working on it. So thank you for all your encouraging comments. They mean a lot to me. So for this cottage court aesthetic, I'm going to be using icons such as teacups, pastries, flowers, baskets, linens, and bucks. I'm also mixing color pencil into my illustration as I usually do. So I'm using gouache paint. It's more opaque than watercolor, but I still like to use my gouache kind of like watercolor. So I water down my colors to create various shades like for the green leaves, for example. If I apply more water into the paint, then the shades will come out lighter. So my tip is just to be aware of the water and paint ratio that you use. So back to what I was talking about. I just feel like I've lost my authenticity somewhere. I wonder if anyone else has this problem. It's like I'm bombarded every day with who I think people expect me to be and who I think I want to be, but I'm left feeling a bit disconnected with myself. And I'll be painting my word for this month on the book. So I usually try to hide the word that I use as a theme in the illustration somewhere. Okay, so for the next page, I'll be painting a simple flower field. Get ready for some more Dutch doors because I still haven't had enough. I'll start by painting clouds. It's hard to paint clouds on bullet journal paper because the paint doesn't absorb and spread well. The paper just kind of wrinkles when it's wet, so it's a bit tricky. But I'll be fixing it later with some white gouache paint. Um, right now I'm just going to put in shades of blue and a little bit of pink to make the blue a little purpley. Yeah, it's not easy to explain how to paint clouds, but I would say just look at a photo and try to capture it with paint. I'm just going to be finishing up my flower field with some simple color pencil stems. I like to render my flower fields a bit abstractly. Um, I think it's kind of fun. Now I'm going to be putting my June calendar on this page with ink and let's cut into it. So I'll be doing Dutch doors with my other pages too and they'll be popping out um, underneath this cloud. It's a similar concept to my spread in April. So, yep. Now I'm going to be starting on my first week's challenge. Um, this is going to be week 23. And I'm just illustrating a simple indoor scene that I thought was cute. So this week's challenge is going to be a honesty tracker. So I was thinking of the opposite concept of a potty mouth jar. I would color in a daisy inside this jar each time I slowed down, stopped myself from an automatic response, and really considered how to respond most genuinely. Sometimes I feel like an actor playing a script in my own life. It could be that I'm pretending to be strong when I feel weak. I say yes when I actually want to say no. Or I respond to my friends in a hasty way, giving them crumbs with not much substance when they actually care and they're seriously asking me how I'm doing. 
things like that. It's a challenge to be honest with yourself and with others. For my weekly spread, I'll be using a simple layout and I'll paint little houses for this touch door page. So when I cut it out, the houses will peek through the clouds. All right, next is week 24. I'll be painting more little houses. So when I flip this page back and forth, you'll see the front side of the house and then the back side of the house. It's cute, right? Then I'll be using the same simple layout as before. I usually use this journal to write down errands and things scheduled, but I have other journals that I write in and then um, an art journal to really draw in. So that's why I keep my weekly spreads pretty simple. Okay, so this was my biggest nightmare and it finally happened. I wrote down the wrong week number. This is actually supposed to be week 24, but I wrote week 25 and I will be correcting it after I realize it in the next page or so. But basically what I would do if you made a mistake like mine to correct it, you can use a bit of water on your brush to work it into that area. The brush and the water should lift off some of the paint and you keep repeating this until enough paint is lifted off. Each time you have to clean your brush, but just don't do it too much or else you'll dig a hole into the paint. I'll show you the corrected week numbers later. I was able to remove enough paint so that you can't really see the old numbers anymore. So for this challenge, I will give you a little background first. One day when I was having a mini identity crisis, I found that in psychology, there's something called the authentic self and the adaptive self. But disclaimer, I didn't do extensive research on this topic, so the gist of it is that since the society we live in values superficiality, perfection, and success, and not our values, we, instead of being authentic, become a version of ourselves that is adaptive, which prioritizes fitting in, getting along, and doing what we're told. Of course, fitting into society as functioning members is a good thing, but when this adaptive self always runs our life, we will start to feel inauthentic. So for this week's challenge, I wanted to discover my personal core values. One of the ways to reclaim our authenticity is to prioritize and live according to these values. So there are hundreds of core values out there, but it's not for us to select, but for us to discover. If we try to select our core values, then we will probably just idealize the values we think we should have and select those. But what we need to do is go through a process of discovery, which takes honesty, effort, and acceptance. So to aid our discovery, I found a random website with seven steps on how to discover our personal core values, so I'll link it below if you want to try it out too. Next is week 25. I'll also be writing the wrong week number here, sadly, because I haven't realized it yet, but I'll fix it later. For this week's spread, I will try a boxy layout. I like quoting phrases that stand out to me each day, and I'm painting a cute cat in a basket. He kind of reminds me of my friend's cat that I've been cat sitting. For this week's challenge, we will be tackling our expectations. This is helpful to recover our authenticity because it helps you have a conversation between your adaptive self and your authentic self. I made this chart up, but I was thinking to fill up the first column with my expectations for myself, then the next one with my perceived or the actual expectations of others for me, and then the last column is a what if column. This column is for my entertainment. I'm not exactly sure what to fill it in with yet, but 
what if the opposite happened? Would it be so bad? So it would be interesting to see at the end everything and realize that maybe not fulfilling my expectations or anyone else's expectations for me is actually not that bad after all. All right, on to the next page. This is actually week 26, where I finally realized that I had to fix the last two week numbers. For this week, I'm going to make another simple weekly spread and paint a cute little teacup with lots of flowers in it and leaves around it. For this illustration, I'm going to use gouache again, a little bit of pen, and color pencil. And all my supplies are listed below if you want to check them out. For this next page, I will paint another flower field with mountains in the background. And challenge 26 will be to draw your day. This is a random challenge. It has nothing to do with my word theme really, but I just wanted to do a page where I could write and draw things from my week. So I'll probably section off this page into three columns and fill it in with blurbs and doodles from a certain day of the week. You'll notice that because I'm using paint in my journal, it wrinkles the page a little. If that bugs you, you can also use color pencil. Maybe I should try setting up a month with color pencils only. I kind of got over the wrinkly page look because I just love paint in my journal so much. So now we're just going to cut into my journal again for this touch door page. Each page is a little longer than the previous. Okay, now we're on to my last weekly spread, week 27. Here's another simple weekly spread idea. I'm actually listing the dates out because this week will transition into July. I'm going to decorate this left corner of my page later. For this next page, I will use this quote. Don't limit your challenges, challenge your limits. Sorry, my scary hair is on the corner. Anyways, this challenge isn't really just for this week. It's a monthly tracker because I wanted to use the last page for that. So going back to my theme for the month, if you're like me, looking to recover your authenticity, then here's a chance to figure out what challenges it takes for you to do that. Actually, I started a side journal, which nobody gets to see. I guess it's kind of like a diary. Basically, I just write without inhibition, and I think this will be helpful for me to get in touch with my authentic side. Anyways, that might actually be a challenge, and maybe that could be an item to be tracked. Other things I'll be tracking this month will be working out, of course. I sit way too much for my own good. I'm sure most people do. And this will take care of my physical body. And for my spiritual health, I'll be tracking my personal prayer time with God. I feel like as a human being, since we have three parts, our physical body, our soul, which is our psychology, and our spirit, in order to be healthy and happy, we need to take care of our entire being. So spiritual health is very important to me. And actually, all of the challenges that I made for this month can be applied to my conversations with God. I think He really appreciates it when we are genuine with Him. Alright, finally done. So let's have a little flip through. Remember, if you do recreate any of these pages or want to join in on the challenges, don't forget to tag me or hashtag so I can see it. So this Dutch door idea is similar to my April spread where I did the same thing. Each page underneath the monthly page peeks out just a little on top. And here is where you can see that I've corrected my weekly dates. It's okay, we make mistakes, we're all humans, right? And all of these challenges will be listed below so you can check that out. So thanks a ton for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Oh wait, if you're new here, subscribe. I'll upload creative videos every month, twice a month. All right, bye.